Coach Borino with you on this lovely Tuesday. Cheers, my friends. Lovely to see you, everybody. Welcome, Todd. Welcome, everybody. Today, I'm going to give you five specific strategies how you can take more listings right now. Now, if you want to accelerate, of course, come to DC. Let me help you. I have a class called the Masterclass, Listing Presentation Masterclass, where I will teach you. Go to goborino.com slash live. Check it out. There's a little video. A lot of the seats are already taken. We always sell it out because it's only for 20 people. I work intensely with 20 of you, two straight days on your communication, on your confidence. So you don't get beat up then again. You get pummeled by sellers. No more overpriced listings, fight over commissions, lost listing, lost opportunities. I mean, think about it. You prospect your ass off, you work your ass off, you work, 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 you follow up, you finally set an appointment, and then you blow it because of a shitty listing presentation. That ain't right. You're leaving a lot of money on the table. So let's fix that. So I'm going to give you five points today, but if you're really serious, if you are in a competitive market, if you have a lot of good agents, big teams, taking listings from you, time to fix that. Because, my friends, I have here in my drawer good U.S. currency. This is the actual money, no fake stuff. This is, as you can see, $8,620 right there. And this is what it would cost here in my neighborhood. This is an average commission. Now, that's just one commission. That's just one commission from a listing if you don't get it. Eight grand. What is it in your area? Now, one listing can result in two, three transactions. So it can be way more than that. It's going to be 15, 20 grand you're living on the table just because you have a shitty listing presentation, just because you're not confident enough, you're not competent enough, your communication sucks, or you're making mistakes. You're making five of them. I'm going to give you five today, right now. You ready? Everybody ready? Let's say hi to some folks real quick before I get started. Who do we have? Hey, Todd is here. Alexander checking in. Fantastic. Good to have you. Angela, hello from Savannah, Georgia. Nice to have you. Dennis, good, to, good afternoon to you as well. Coletta, love your show from Alabama. Good to have you, Coletta. Glad you're liking it. Justine, joining the Bucks County, pal, Pennsylvania. Love Borino. Great to have you, friends. Sharon is here with us. Dantika just joined us. Sanjay from Canada is here. Yanira, Earl, Ivan, oh, Ivanko, hello. Czechoslovakia, Slovakia checking in. Fantastic. Armando, Todd, and a bunch of other good people here to learn some good stuff. So let's get started. I'm going to give you five things. If you're having a hard time getting good listings, or if getting the signature at the end of your presentation is tough, or worse, you hear things like, uh, we got to think about it. We have more agents to interview. Um, this is not what we expected. The other agent told us more. All these things. Some agents still believe, you may be one of them, that those are objections. They're not. That's a polite way. The seller is telling you politely, you're not our guy, you're not our agent, you're not our girl, we're not going with you. It's a brush. It's a stall. And the worst thing you can do is come up with some clever single line or double line, if you're really fancy, objection handler. What you don't realize is the problem happened long before you got to the signature part. Now, I will give you a way to get that signature in the end. I promise you. I'll give you a way, very simple, very easy, very elegant from Presentation Plus 2.0, the stuff you're going to be learning here with me in DC in May. All right, so let's get started. Problem number one. You need more appointments. You don't have enough appointments. You're not getting enough listings because you don't have enough appointments. See, it has to do with your status, with your mentality. Think about it. Be honest. Be honest, really. This month, this month, in the next 30 days, how many confirmed listing appointments do you have on your schedule? Be honest. Now, I'm not going to ask you to type it in the comments because I know uh, it would be a very low number for some of you, big fucking fat zero. So now when you get a listing appointment, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be one first really excited, which is good. Yay! Jump up and down, right? I used to. I loved it. But two, if that's the only listing appointment you have in the next 14, 21 days, 30 days or so, your behavior, your approach, your mindset, your communication, and your status will be very different if you have two this week. You with me? You follow the logic there? If you have one in 30 days, you're screwed. You're setting yourself up because want it or not, rehearse it or not, have a clever lines or memorized presentation or not, none of that matters. You're going to give away a certain vibe. You know that vibe? You ladies can relate to that. You're in the bar, you're having a good time with your girlfriends, you're having a couple of drinks, and the desperate dude comes. 
and the desperate dude is trying lines, and the desperate dude is trying to offer you drinks. See, real estate is a lot like dating in many ways, isn't it? You don't want to be the desperate dude, the sleazebag, who needs to get laid because he hasn't gotten laid in a month. But in real estate coaching, analogy with sex. That works really well, doesn't it? You need more appointments. You need to have more appointments. So it's a two-prong approach. The way you're going to fix that is number two. You need to have more leads. It's a lead generation problem. Not getting good listings at the end is a lead generation problem. 50%, mark my words, 50% of your problems, your financial and business problems will go away if you improve your lead generation systems. That means your active prospecting and passive marketing. That means how you generate high probability leads for sell by owners and expired listings, which are the easiest ones. Referrals, open houses, direct mail, Facebook, and a bunch of other things you can do. Fix that first. Don't try to fix it at the end. The problem at the end happens at the beginning with your leads. So you need two, more leads and better leads. You with me so far? That's how you're going to fix getting listings at the end. Because if you have more leads, and if somebody's a real douchebag to you, a real dick, we know some people, they're rude, they're arrogant. They can treat us like dirt, they think. You can simply say, unless we're going to shift here, I think we're done. Which is what I've said. I've had people where I had to say that. And some shifted, some didn't. I stood up and I walked out. Because the last thing I want you to lose in this business is your dignity. Is your sense of who you are and what you're worth. Because you're worth a lot. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Especially not some asshole seller. So you need more. But you also need better leads. Because if somebody who came off the internet, some tire ticker, who may be possibly ready if things are aligned two years from now, you ain't got time for that. You ain't got resources for that. You need somebody now. Why do you think I so hype and teach you so much, and I'm so adamant about it, in the day and age of digital advertising and marketing, well, I do a lot of that, it's still good to go after for sale by owners, old expireds, new expireds, canceled listings. It's still good to hold open houses because it gets you now business. Better leads. High probability leads. That's why I developed two boot camps and two systems around it, the Fisborino and the Expired Plus, all part of the path. So the solution is you got to fix your lead generation. How many leads did you generate today? How many leads have you gotten today? New names, new people, new contact information, new conversation. How many? If the answer is zero, your business is in trouble. That's like an ice cream shop who has a big closed sign on the door. If you're not getting new business in, you're going to be screwed. Three, four months down the road, you're going to struggle and go hungry. The reason you're hungry and broke today is because three, four months ago, your lead generation was broken. And of course, mindset as well, but that's a different story. Problem number three, you're not sending enough appointments because of your follow-up. Your follow-up is broken. You still believe the bullshit that drip campaign is follow-up. You still think people love seeing your emails. You still think people actually read them. You're still delusional. How much do you enjoy getting emails? Do you really enjoy having morning coffee and says, I can't wait to get on my computer or my phone and read my emails. I love seeing what everybody sent me, what I can read. No. Doesn't work that way. What's the first thing you do? Your inbox. If it's anything like mine, I have 150, 200 emails a day on an average day. The first thing I do is select this one, hold shift down, select this, delete. Nobody's got time for that. So if you still think your follow-up is drip campaigns, you're sadly mistaken and you're about to leave this business because smart agents understand it's a multi-channel communication. So you got to fix your follow-up. And you fix two things. Quality, quantity, frequency. I'm giving you a lot of good stuff today, huh? Barino's on fire. This is my second coffee, can you tell? <laughs> so to fix your follow-up, get a good CRM, get LionDesk. It's the best one out there. When you compare the quality of the service, the tools and features it has, and how much you're going to spend per month, that would be my choice. Lion Desk. I don't get paid by David and his company. I just think they're really cool. I, I always endorse them, always like them. Lion Desk. There are a million others. doesn't matter. Quality. Quality of your follow-up. Quantity. How many leads do you actually follow up with? And frequency. That's the secret to good follow-up. Now, I will do another session for you just on follow-up because we could spend an entire day just teaching you that. But if you're not getting listings, fix your appointments, leads, and your follow-up. And here you thought, I'm going to give you just a clever line to get a signature at the end. It's more complex than that. Okay? Next, high status agent. How you're perceived by the seller. 
especially at the beginning of the conversation. And it happens in three phases. Let me give them to you. This is phase one, phase two, and phase three. This is four seconds. How you encountered that seller in the first place, whether it was through an open house, a phone call, a visit, um, uh, online conversation that turned into a phone call conversation, turned into a visit, whichever mechanic, mechanics, the first four seconds of that interactions, and this is the funny part, it happens subconsciously, happens very quickly, happens automatically without very much conscious involvement on the seller's part. It's not like they have a clipboard and they start evaluating your clothes and your appearance and your behavior, energy, your confidence, your communication, your status. It doesn't work that way. It happens very quickly subconsciously, just like that sleazeback, that needy guy coming to a girl in a bar. It's not like she has a checklist on her phone that goes uh, appearance, height, weight, age, doesn't work that way. But very quickly we evaluate people. Yes, people judge books by their covers. And we are social creatures and we're very, very delicately wired for social interactions. It's very often inaccurate, very often wrong, very often doesn't serve us, but that's how it is. So within the first few seconds, they instantly decide, do we like, trust, respect, and want to do business with this person? Then it's just a matter of collecting evidence. So this is very important part to it. And when you screw this up, the end doesn't matter a whole lot. It's very hard, sometimes impossible to recover from that. Just like if you encounter somebody who comes across as really weird, needy, desperate, or too arrogant, an asshole, they would have to really work hard and long to recover from that first impression. Isn't that the truth? Don't you guys feel that? Yeah. Then the second part is through your follow-up, through your communication, you reinforce your high status agent status, and it must be very congruent. There cannot be any discrepancies. In other words, if you're a high status agent, you cannot come across as super needy going right after the appointment and being desperate and willing to give concessions and settling. You hold the ground. And the final part is the actual presentation, which is what I'm going to work on here on DC, where you continue that high status. It's in the way you communicate, the way you behave. It's a certain, certain thought process, but also asking the right questions, doing things in the right sequence. It's a process and we're going to take it apart and put it back together. You're going to do it about 10, 15 times until it's going to be very organic, very authentic and very powerful. So first impression, follow up, presentation happens in three stages. You must congruently hold the status of high status agent. There are three important elements that you need to focus on there. And th those are confidence, very important. It's one of the most attractive qualities you can have, being confident. You can develop it. I was, and I know you're going to laugh, you're not going to believe me probably. <laughs> I was an introvert. I was really shy when I came to the US. I was a young guy. It happened only a few years ago. I'm still a young guy. And because I didn't speak the language, didn't understand the culture, didn't know people here, I didn't have a family or friends here, that made me very shy and insecure at the beginning. And then through the process and studying and exploring and just doing it, doing life, I developed a sense of confidence and stability and growth and become, became later high status real estate agent. But confidence is like magnet. If it's genuine, now I'm not talking, you know, the salesman, oh, I'm confident, I'm going to sell a million houses this year. Yeah. We're talking to an authentic, real fun person who doesn't need to sell it, who doesn't need to shove it down your throat. People who are generally confident, very important, very attractive, super magnetic. Competence this is going to play a bigger role these days. With all the companies moving in our turf, trying to take a cut of the business, not to mention the competition, you really need to know your shit. You need to know what you're talking about. So if you've been in the business for two months, you need help. Now, I can help you, of course. I, I'm good at helping people and teaching them this stuff. But sellers will question your competence. When you get questions like, well, how many homes did you sell in our area? What are they really asking? What is behind that question? Are you competent enough and confident you can help us. Are you our best choice? This is the entire process, the three-step process has to establish and confirm that you are their best choice. You, not an instant offer from Zillow. You, not the mega team down the street. You, not the other agent they're going to interview tomorrow who offered them a huge discount. You, not the discount brokerage who will do it for a flat fee of $2,000. It can be done, but it requires a different approach. 
It requires a very modern, different way of communicating and presenting. That's why I need two full days to work with you to show you how it's done. Not just show you, but train you. That's why you need to come to DC. You can't just watch it because it will be like learning how to swim. You're not going to learn it from watching a video. You need to be here. All right? So confidence, competence, there's a third element to it, and that's empathy. Let's see if I can write it this way. Em Notice I switched hands. Empathy. What do you call it? Ambidextrous? Yeah? Am I right? Empathy. So it's confidence, competence, and empathy. That's what makes a high status agent. Where would you rate yourself? Be honest. On a scale of one to five. Five being a total rock star. Five. Solid. Can't go wrong. Got it. Nailed. In confidence, in competence, and empathy. And if your score is less than 15, you're in trouble. Because I promise you there's an agent in your area right now working on it day and night, working diligently and focused to take your listings, take your business, take your money. Who's going to be, or she or she, will be confident, competent, and do it with empathy. Authentic, real empathy where the people that that agent deals with feel connection, feel that the agent has their best interest at heart. Everybody wants that. Watch what I do here. I mean, I walk the walk. I offer you the invitation to come to DC, yes. I want to tell you about the workshop because I think you would benefit. And taking five or six extra listings as a result will give you your money 20 times back or something like that. I'm not very good with math, but it's going to be a lot more than you're going to invest. It's an inexpensive program compared to what you're going to get. But in addition to that, majority of these lives, majority of what I do with you, majority of my work is to help you, to empathize and understand. It's a tough business, no question about it. It's a fucking competitive business as a motherfucker. You have 1.2 million or so agents here in the United States. And the pie is only so big. So you got to deliver, you got to be good. And my job is to help you. Whether you become a client and want my training or not, doesn't really matter. I'm here to deliver and I can't disappoint you. So are you confident, competent, and are you delivering with empathy? Where are you? All right, next, the last one, you must lead. You must be positioned as a leader. So you lead. You see, the biggest mistake, well, no, not biggest, but I made a lot of big mistakes that cost me a lot of these. A lot, a lot, a lot. This is nothing. This just breaks my heart to just hold it and go, how many of these I lost? A lot. Don't even want to count. Don't even want to go there. But I always thought, when I go to an appointment and I meet with the sellers, if I talk to them and they talk to me and they like me, if we're like kumbaya, I'm going to get the listing because we're friends. And I was terribly wrong because it doesn't work that way. I was not leading. I was not in charge. That would be like going to my dentist who will say, how are you doing? Well, sit down. I never got to really know you. So let's talk. And by the way, uh, any tools of these appeal to you that you would like me to use on your mouth today? That would not go very well. I would not respect that dentist and sure as hell would not let him get into my mouth and pay him a lot of money for that. Would you? You know what I mean? You are there to lead. And if you don't establish that leadership at the beginning, you're not going to wrestle it back at the end. If at the beginning it's not clear, look, I'm here to help, here's what's going to happen. We're going to do a quick walkthrough, I'm going to take a quick look at your house, take some notes and take a couple pictures. Then we're going to sit down at the kitchen table for about 25, maybe 30 minutes, I'll answer your questions, we're going to go over all the information. And then at the end, we're going to decide. Maybe we'll like each other, we decide to work together, maybe not. But I promise you this will be time well spent, you're going to have plenty of information, you will feel comfortable deciding whatever you choose to decide. I'm not here to pressure you, I'm not here to close you. We're simply here to discuss what's best for you guys, what is the best outcome. Cool? Great. Let's go. I set up the expectations, I set up what's called a frame. Who is in charge? I am. No question about it. So what if the seller stalls? What if the seller throws me an objection? What if the seller fights that? I would bring it out immediately. What if the seller says, well, we're not ready to sell? I will bring it out immediately. Then why are we here? What would you like? Well, we just need to get some information. Mm, that's the problem. And then the problem is right here. In this process of follow-up, there's a very important junction that happens right here. Right here. Qualify. 
you see, if you're using the old real estate model, you still qualify to the sellers. You still try to sell yourself to the sellers. You still try to suck up to the sellers so they like you, so they give you the listing. Some agents still even use that term. Nay, nay, nay. This year, you got to switch, you got to shift. You qualify the seller. And again, this is not a sales gimmick. This is not a technique. This is an organic part of the process. Just like using the doctor example, if I go to my doctor, what's the first thing they do? What's the first thing they do? You walk in, first they check if they can take your money, right? That's the first thing. Do you still have that insurance? Okay, can we get your money? When you go in, the nurse takes your blood pressure, takes your temperature, they weigh you, you look at the scale, go, fuck me, another five pounds, what happened? <laughs> Must be the tennis shoes I'm wearing. If you're anything like me, that's exactly what happens. They take your vitals, they ask you questions, what seems to be the problem, they qualify you. Only then you get to see the doctor who will diagnose, do more checkups, and then prescribe. Then why would you jump to the prescription without the qualification? Well, I don't want to piss off the seller. I don't want to lose the opportunity. Aha! Because you don't have enough fucking appointments. One day I'm going to break this whole thing. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Go outside. You don't have appointments. You're desperate. So you want to do what you think would get you the listing rather than what is the process? What is the best interest of the seller? What, are, what is it they're trying to do in the first place? You know one of the biggest complaints that sellers have about our industry? Agents don't listen. They don't pay attention. It's all about the commission. They make too much money and they don't fucking care about their clients. That's their complaint. You know why? Because average agent, you're not. Average agent would not take time to listen, to really figure out what is it that they're trying to do? Why is that important? How bad do they want it? What is driving them? Understanding their circumstances, their condition. Are they even in a position to sell? Is it really in their best interest? And very often, even the seller has no clue. And then they discover doing a listing presentation, so it's a really dumb idea. They're not going to get their $500,000 for their $200,000 house. And you wasted a colossal amount of time, opportunity, your status, and it just feels shitty because you just feel like you were used, you missed up, messed up. Nobody wins. That's why the qualification process right here is so important. And we're going to work on it. We're going to work on the actual phone call. I'm going to give you a checklist that you're going to go down. You're going to ask questions. You're going to write them down. It makes a huge difference because I'd rather spend 10 minutes on the phone and at the end say, you know, it's not in your best interest to sell. Plus, I don't think you're in a position anyway. I think you're better off just staying where you are for the next two, three years. Then going through the process, setting up the appointment, preparing for the appointment, getting the CMA in place, getting the presentation in place, driving there or bringing them to the office, better choice, sitting with them for 20, 30 minutes to arrive to the same conclusion. That would be a colossal waste of time. Besides, it's not really in the best interest of the client. It doesn't provide any more service. I can still keep in touch. I can still follow up. I can still provide information, mail them something, email, even talk to them. Nothing wrong with that. But agents, and again, for these reasons, in desperation, think, I'll talk them into it. I just hope, 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 hope. You know, Las Vegas real estate. Hope, 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 seven, seven, hope, 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 hope. Ah, better luck next time. Instead of in a process, having a system in place. All of this is a system. It's a step-by-step -step system. And I'll help you build it if you want my help. But you can do this on your own. It's just going to take a little longer. It took me a couple of years to figure this shit out. And lots of lost money. You're leaving money on the table. Every listing appointment with a motivated seller and the seller ends up listing either with you and overpriced the damn thing or list with somebody else, I don't know which one is worse, costs you a lot of money. Not to mention it hurts. It just confirms I'm doing something wrong and that sucks. That feeling I so remember just blows. Or you drive by houses, I did the listing prison, motherfucker. There's a sign there. Happened to all of us. And you know why? It's right here. It's right here. If we take every opportunity you blew, every chance you had and blew it, I promise you after a few minutes of analysis, we would find the problem. And of course, it can be the presentation itself. If you suck at that, then this doesn't matter. If the presentation is not confident, if it's not competent, if it's not engaging, if it's not a social interaction first and foremost, if it's just reciting facts, if you're just going over numbers and if you're hoping that because you have these fancy graphs and pictures and data, they're going to hear you and list at the price you're suggesting, ain't going to work. Trust me, I tried. That approach doesn't work. It's because what I teach you and the most effective way of doing this has nothing to do with selling. 
It has everything to do with neurolinguistic programming, influence, and psychology, because that's what drives our behavior. And whether seller lists with this agent or that agent, you still think is because that agent offered a thousand dollar discount. And as long as you keep believing that, the next thing you're going to try is offer a $1,500 discount. And now you're in a bidding war with everybody else. And now you're going to be labeled as everybody else. Are you getting it? If you're not rock bottom, absolutely cheapest, Walmart of real estate, it doesn't matter how much you charge. If you're not the cheapest, there is no advantage to being close to the cheapest or being the second or the third or fourth. Makes no difference. Unless your business model can offer listings for, I don't know, $99. The commission doesn't matter. It's not about the commission. As you're going to see, day two, we will do the emotional decoupling, the commission process, the we're on the same team process. All of that will show you how the human mind is not logical, it's emotional. And once you understand that, holy shit, it's like having a remote control to their brain. It's crazy. Not that they will feel manipulated, on the contrary, they will feel relieved. They will feel that finally somebody gets them. Finally somebody wants the best for them. And you can say it, you can act like it, but if it's not authentic, organic, and it's not based on the systems and not based on psychology, it's going to feel hollow, it's going to feel flat, it's going to feel salesy. How do you know that, Borino? Uh, the reason I know that is because that's what I tried to do for a very long time. Is that why you became homeless? Yes, that's exactly why I became homeless. See, I can have a conversation with myself. I wish I could bring you guys online. It'd be more fun. We're exploring different possibilities of communicating with you. I think it'd be kind of fun to talk on the phone or whatever. For now, it's typing you got. Is this all making sense? Looks like it is. Steven, what's happening? Sunny Arizona checking in from Stacy. Excellent. All right, looks like it makes sense to all of you. Are you guys enjoying it? Good. Barbara says, you're right on the money. Love your honest and hysterical delivery. Well, thank you. It needs to be engaging. I mean, if it was boring, you guys wouldn't stick around. No matter how good of an information this would be, right? Sharon says, I have to have leads to be successful in my own business. Amen, Sharon. Amen. And if today you haven't generated at least one good motivated lead, your business is closed. You may not see it right away. You may not experience it right away. But I promise you, pretty soon you're going to tell. 60 days, 90 days or so from now, you're going to be like, what the fuck? Where is the business? Where is the money? Where are my appointments? Where are my listings? Because it's about a 90-day cycle, about. So you got to get leads today to get appointments, more, better leads, high probability leads, and you got to follow up. Quality, quantity, frequency. Quality, quantity, frequency. But if you haven't generating leads, then the rest doesn't matter. Now the cool thing is, and the reason I picked the Presentation Plus to be the flagship I'm going to teach you in May, is because I believe if you feel very confident in your communication, if you feel really competent, and if we can inject it with authentic empathy, authenticity, that's real. That will spill over not just to your presentations, that would be a no-brainer. That's going to spill over to your follow-up, the way you communicate with people. Because you know, hey, I can help these people. And I can list it at a price where I know the fucker's going to sell, they'll be happy. That's going to spill over to your prospecting, same concept. So it's going to have a ripple effect throughout your business. It's huge. And I've seen it over and over with people. My man Mike Putnam. Great example. Came to DC, spent a couple days. When I had dinner with him, he was telling me over a million dollars in gross commission. Now, of course, it's not just me. Mike works his ass off and he's a good agent. But I had a lot to do with it. I take credit where credit is due. And that's just one of many examples. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's more. If you go to that page, goborino.com slash live, there's a video we posted from people who graduated from the class. So do check it out. All right. Fix your follow-up, Sharon. Yes, that's, that's, that's it. All right. JR says Zoom meetings. Yeah, we could do Zoom. Um, we had some technical issues with the Zoom, but that, that would be the idea. With Zoom, we cannot show the comments, which I think you guys like. To see your name and, and your comments makes it kind of a little more interactive. But you're right. Yeah, that's, that's one of the options, JR. Thanks for that. All right, guys. Was this helpful? So here is the URL, my last invitation today, I promise. GoBorino.com slash live. You're going to get the brand new Presentation Plus 2.0. We're going to spend two days together, breakfast, lunch, snacks, all included. We're going to have a glass of good wine on day one after we finish, maybe a glass of beer, whatever is your thing, just to hang out, have a good time together. I answer your questions. I'll stay for as long as you want me to. We're going to have everything on video. That means we're going to watch you present. You're going to be able to 
see yourself, what you're doing right and what needs work. Because it's one thing when you're doing it, it's another thing if you see yourself. Plus, you're going to watch your fellow students and you're going to interact with them. And it's a very interesting experience to be on the receiving side of it. That's going to help you see things very different from a different angle. And as a special bonus, we did the same class two years ago. I will give you free access to the recording as well. It's a three-piece recording of the class, the best of the class. So when you go home, you want to review it. We're not going to record this one, but you're going to get the previous one, which the content is very similar. So I think you will benefit from that. So that's going to be a special bonus for you. We'd love to have you. A few seats are available. Go to goboring.com live. I would love to work with you in person. This is one of those things where I can't just send you videos. I can't just send you a book. You will get videos and you will get a book. It's going to be all part of it. But I think the most beneficial will be for us to be able to roll up our sleeves in a very intimate setting, very intense setting. And it's not just going to be me telling you, it's going to be you trying it and then try this and then do that. And then don't do that, instead do this. That's where the real benefit is. And you watching, when you're the seller and the agent does something, you're like, oh, stop, stop, stop. That's the mistake I make too. Let's try again. Because friends, if you're doing this in front of the seller, which is 99% of the time, right? You don't practice at home listing presentations for hours at a time. You're going to leave these. You're going to lose all of these. I'm guilty. I admit it. I didn't practice listing presentation until I figured out, holy shit, none of that prospecting matters. None of the follow-up matters. If my presentation sucks, I'm not serving my clients. I'm not making money. I'm not feeding my family. That sucks. So we got to fix that. All right, friends, good life today. Thank you very much for being here today. I very much appreciate every single one of you being here every day. We'll do this again tomorrow, same place, same time. Yeah, post your questions. Let me know what I can help you with. I'm here to help. I'm here to provide as much information as I can to inspire you, to push you. You still need to do the work. That's your part. But I can show you the way because I've taken the detours. I tried the shortcuts and I know this works, this doesn't. Not just because I did it, but because so many of my students, I mean, I'm blessed with having tens of thousands of you now who one way or another participate in my training to, to see. The patterns are easy. Once you've been doing it like me for 20 years, you see the patterns. And I can very quickly and very easily tell you, this is the problem. Here's what we need to troubleshoot. Here is how you fix that. That became my strength. I don't teach you 50 different things. I teach you a very handful. How to get high probability leads, how to follow up with them so you get appointments, and how to turn those appointments into listings. That's my mission. Because I believe that's the easiest way to get these bad boys. All right, so if you want more, do sign up. Don't make it about money. We made it easy. There's a two, two payment plan. It's affordable. We have a solid guarantee that if you don't get extra six listings as a direct result of that class, ask for your money back. You have one year to test it. That's how confident I am. That's how much I believe you can do this. So if for whatever reason, you go home, test it, put it all to work, try it, and then get back a year from now and tell me, yay or nay. And if you say nay, no questions asked. Here's your money. Thanks for coming. Cool? All right. JR says, you rock. Thank you, my man. Stacy says, great information, Borino. Appreciate it. Thank you for the nice word. All right, guys. Thanks for being here today. Go out there. Crush it. It's a great day to get some business. It's a great day to be a real estate rock star. Plenty of opportunities out there. Don't squander it. Go help people. Get paid. Make a lot of these. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Coach Borino signing off. Let's go get him. Ciao.